Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to take a, a few moments to briefly consider the very serious NHS crisis that we're facing this winter, which may well be the worst the service have ever had to deal with. May not be able to survive it. And this is by design on the government's part, because you could not be stupid enough to allow the perfect storm that is now set in motion. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So let's take stock of what the Tories have done with their 12 years in power as the background to what we're facing now. So first, a decade of underfunding for the NHS. This has had to be disguised to make it look like they're pumping ever larger sums of public money into it. Obviously, they get found out immediately if you look at the figures and go, oh, yeah, they haven't been putting enough money into the NHS. No, they have to look like they're putting more and more and in real terms, but they're not. What they're doing is pumping ever larger amounts of public money into private healthcare providers, where, remember, a lot of it is just creamed off as profit, with less to the NHS itself. And they make it difficult to separate out the sums actually going to the NHS, because what they do is the government don't pay the private providers directly. They funnel it through the NHS. So it looks like all the money is going to the NHS, but it's not staying in the NHS. It's, they force the NHS to contract services out. But we can see the result. We're desperately short of NHS staff, including paramedics, midwives, nurses and doctors, have a huge waiting list for NHS treatment, millions long, nearly 7 million. It is a deliberate and sustained policy to do three things. Firstly, to encourage people to opt out for private health insurance, where they can afford to do so, to get people used to the idea when the Tories switch off the NHS completely. Secondly, to get people used to the idea that health-related consultations and treatments will not be quick and effective. Slowly, slowly make it so that it's really hard to get medical treatment unless you've got the money to go private. Thirdly, to convince people that the NHS is somehow not fit for the modern age and needs replacing with a different model. Uh, the rubbish US model, by the way, not the good Italian model. The second thing the Tories have done is made it much harder to recruit healthcare workers, removing the bursary for nurses for years, introducing the NHS surcharge for many foreign workers, then claiming um, or making it harder to recruit foreign workers altogether, leaving the EU single market. All of these things have contributed to huge shortages, which now stand at over 130,000. When Boris Johnson first became prime minister, it was about 100,000. Now 132,000. Massive increase. In the second quarter of this year alone, the shortage of nurses went up by 8,000 from just under 39,000 to just under 47,000. You know, the, the government have the nerve cell so recruit all these nurses. Like, So why have we got larger and larger shortages of nurses then? Third, instead of using our response to the pandemic to strengthen the NHS, they used it to further weaken it. So it's an opportunity to, like, who during a pandemic sees the opportunity to weaken your healthcare system instead of strengthen it? Even more money was diverted from the NHS to private providers, some of them wholly unfit to deliver anything of value. And that lack of PPE being supplied in the early days, early months really, meant huge numbers of frontline staff being infected unnecessarily. Long COVID is now taking an extremely heavy toll amongst NHS staff. The general lack of mitigations has also meant that we have way more people becoming ill and long-term ill, which is placing an unnecessarily large burden on an unnecessarily weakened NHS. So that's where the government have left us, leading into this winter. And it's been a deliberate and consistently applied series of policies from David Cameron all the way up to Rishi Sunak, who, although, you know, you'll say, oh, he's not been prime minister for very long, has nonetheless not exactly leapt into action ahead of a looming winter crisis. Besides, we already know he's after replacing the NHS with an entirely privatised system. We know, as Chancellor, he visited the United States on at least one occasion with no government business. He didn't have any meetings that had anything to do with him being Chancellor. It was just to meet with private healthcare providers. And this idea of an NHS winter crisis is now accepted as seasonal, as if it just happens. You know, but they didn't happen under the last Labour government. It's not a crisis because winter produces higher levels of illness. It's a crisis because we don't have the capacity to cope with what is a very predictable higher level of illness. And now we're headed into something quite new. 
England's Chief Medical Officer, Professor Chris Whitty, has written to NHS staff just over a week ago to basically tell them if they fail to be able to deliver the level of professional care normally expected, the regulator will cut them some slack if referred. Basically, there are very high standards, as you would expect, of our healthcare workers. If they fall below these standards, people could suffer serious long-term damage or even death. Should this happen, the clinicians deemed responsible could be referred to the regulator, where you may face serious consequences. What the letter is saying is that it's understood that nurses, doctors and others may not physically be able to maintain the usual professional standards. That the standard of care is going to fall below the expected levels. But if you kill someone, don't sweat it. We're not going to make a fuss about it. And this is horrific for all concerned. It's horrific for the patients and families who are going to suffer from the 12 year attack on the NHS that has led us here. It'll be terrible for them, especially when they're told that, yes, under normal circumstances, this shouldn't have happened. And any doctors or nurses responsible would absolutely face serious consequences. Uh, but that's not the case now. Go home and deal with it because that's just the way the NHS works now. But it's also horrific for the staff. Not only will they face even greater emotional damage from being unable to provide the level of care that they should and know they should and seeing patients under their care suffer and die needlessly, but they may still be referred to the regulator. They may still have to go through the stressful process of defending themselves, even if the regulator ultimately comes to the conclusion that, yeah, we're going to cut you some slack. You know, we've already seen huge numbers leave the profession because of the treatment of frontline NHS staff. It's frankly inhumane. This will make it much worse. And I keep coming back to this. We are not in this position because of an unhappy circumstance. Other major economies are not doing this. German and Italian medics are not being told it's fine if you kill the odd patient this winter. We're also not in this position because the Tories are just too blinded by ideology and too incompetent to manage the situation when it blows up in their face. This is all going according to plan. They're delighted. This is exactly what they wanted to happen from the moment they came to power in 2010. You know, maybe there are some Conservatives who believe in the NHS, that understand you need a well-resourced, free at point of contact health service in order to provide our economy with a fit and healthy workforce. You know, who understand that if you have illness and injury, go untreated because people can't afford decent, quick health care, that you need way more workers then to cope with the absences. If you're going to have lots of absences because of illness and injury, you need a much larger workforce. So you need way more immigration. I accept that maybe there are Conservatives who can see that. But those Conservatives have not had any influence for a very long time. I think the Conservatives we have in charge are seeing the end game here. I said in 2019 when the Tories won the election, it's entirely possible now that that is it for the NHS that even if Labour could win the next election, and that was bloody unlikely at the time, given the massive scale of the defeat, that it might be impossible, absolutely impossible within a reasonable time frame. That the only chance might be to implement proportional representation in order to keep the Tories out of power for a generation, the generation it would take for progressive parties to work together to rebuild. I still think the same, almost three years later. I think some people think... Labour could come to power in a couple of years and just change policies and that's all that needs to happen. Just change your policy, it'll be fine again. I just, I just don't think there'll be enough left to work with. I think, it's, I think it's done. You know, the staff shortages can't be dealt with overnight. And it's 132,000 at the moment. Even if you pulled out all the stops and recruited far and wide, you can't deliver training and on-the-job mentoring for 132,000 new staff all at once, much less. And that's the shortage it is now. What's it going to be like in two more years? You know, they won't be able to deal with the long COVID among staff as well as the public. Training more doctors and nurses is fine, but you won't see that for years. It takes years to train them. You're not going to see that until the following parliament at least. You know, I liken it to some of the places Russia has occupied in Ukraine. Like Kherson, for example, just been liberated, and when the war's over, they can recover. The people have been cruelly treated, like everywhere, but the basic infrastructure has been left largely intact. Kherson, as a city, can be rebuilt quite quickly. But then you look at Kharkiv, it's bombed into ruins. There's no turning that around in a few months. You can't, that's, that's like start again. That's a complete rebuild from scratch project. When you destroy something utterly, you know, you can't just fix it. <laughs> you have to rebuild it. I think the best thing that Labour can do if they win power 
is to order a full independent public inquiry into the state of the NHS. Completely at arm length, leave it to the public inquiry, have no input in it, but make sure that it's, re it's reporting regularly to the public. Let the public see exactly what has been done to their NHS and why. Because there seems no way to save it and all we can do now is hope to rebuild it again from scratch, to start again. And the only hope for that is the public realising that John Major was right. The NHS is about as safe in the hands of the modern Tories as a pet hamster would be with a hungry python. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.